If there's one thing that I would change during the time that I've been collecting knives is how I documented what my collection looked like throughout the last three years. I've kept really good notes on what I've owned, what I liked, what I don't like, but I kind of wish I would have made more videos on my knife collection. I think it's a really cool way to just see how everything has involved over time, what you like, what you don't like, what you consider to be a keeper or something that you just wanted to kind of test out. So today, we're gonna do the first ever knife collection video on the channel. My goal is to try and update it every couple of months or maybe even yearly. Maybe you guys can help me out down in the comments. Let me know how often should I document the knife collection, but I kind of wanted to share what it looks like right now. I'm happy with every single knife that's in my collection at the moment. I think they're all keepers. And going forward, I've been definitely trying to buy with more purpose, with intent of keeping. Although I do love checking out different designs and I like to trade around a little bit, I think I've honed in what I really enjoy. So this is the current state of the collection. I'm happy to share with you guys. Let's get to it. So the first knife in the collection is the Rick Hinder XM18. Now, this one is special for quite a few reasons. Number one, I got this from my buddy MB Wild. He's been a great mentor and friend in the EDC community. And number two, this is probably the one configuration that I have been the most happy with. If you know anything about Hinder, you know that these things are kind of like Legos. You can buy different hardware for them and really make them your own. You can kind of customize them in that way. And my buddy MB Wild went through the trouble of finding all this really cool bronzed hardware and made this Hinder XM18 absolutely perfect. There's a Bowie blade on this one, CPM 20 CV, and it is just my favorite Hinder. I've had the Eclipse, I've tried the Skinny, XM18, but this one here coming from my buddy, having all the perfect hardware on it is my keeper. And it is the design from Hinder that I just really connected with the most. Perfect ergonomics, the Bowie blade is automatically a, a thing for me. I just love that blade style. So first in the collection is the XM18 3.5 inch with all the bronzed out hardware. Up next is a knife that I have sold in the past and have absolutely regretted it. Definitely one of the ones that I wish I would have kept because the newer models have this change that just really irks me. And that is the Chavez 229 Red and Sion. This is the Ultramar series manufactured by Riot. And what I don't like is the screws on the skull clip. Made Everybody made such a big deal about the skull clip and how it's too aggressive. And my personal take on it is if you don't like the skull clip, then just don't buy the knife, plain and simple but I had one of the previous models without the screws on the skull clip and I sold it unfortunately at the time to fund some camera gear. So I found a new one and it's still just a badass knife. You know, Chavez to me, it's, it's an absolute tank of a knife, but it's just stunning and simple. Um, even though it is a big chunky knife, the action on it is incredibly smooth and just satisfying. Everything is just a little more on the overbuilt side. Um, but man, it just carries so wonderfully and it's just such a badass knife. I'm a fan of the skull clip, like I said earlier, so I don't mind it at all. I kind of wish Chavez would go back to hiding the screws on the clip personally, but at the end of the day, I had to pick another one up because I absolutely love this model and I'm a big fan of Chavez. I had the Sangre a while back, but the 229 Red and Sion is the one that always calls my name. So that is the Chavez 229 Red and Sion the Ultramar edition manufactured by Riot. Up next, I have two knives from the same maker, and that is Strider. So the first one is the Strider SNG. This was the first one that I picked up. I picked it up on the secondary Tiger Stripe blade. This one has the Gunner Grip G10 OD Green show side with the TI, the Flame TI Anno backside. Like I said in my Strider SMF performance video, I am currently crushing on Strider real hard there's something about the knives that just really that's just really appealing to me. In a way, the best way that I can describe it is they kind of seem primitive, like they're no nonsense. You don't necessarily fidget with these or mess around with them. They're just hardcore tools that can take a beating. And I love the whole Strider history too. It's cool that these knives have been in movies. It's cool that he's collaborated with so many big brands in the knife industry. And it's awesome picking them up because they make them in a ton of different varieties. Um, depending on what model you enjoy, like the SNG or the SMF, the customs are just absolutely ridiculous. So knife number two is the Strider SMF Performance. I got very lucky on this. My buddy Nick 
was really quick on the draw with this drop and he was able to pick it up for me and i am so freaking glad that he did because this knife is an absolute tank and i love it i really do the smf performance is all ti so ti front and back um same tiger striped blade and i mean the size difference between the two if i can capture it here on the camera is just i mean absolutely ridiculous like the smf performance it is just a tank um, but carries just as well, handles just as comfortably. So I'm super stoked to have a couple of striders in the collection. I said in my last video that I'm hopefully going to get a custom and that'll maybe happen, or so happen sooner rather than later. But Strider, really stoked to have some of the knives, some of his knives in the collection. Looking forward to having a couple more of his knives in my collection. Now the next two knives are from my all-time favorite maker and that is Enrique Pena. The first one is the Bravo. The Bravo has have, has got to be one of my favorite Pena knives. Um, thumb stud deployment, front flipper deployment, and the overall look on this knife is just really cool. I'm a big fan of Pena because he mixes in that modern twist into a traditional design. And you can see it with all of his slip joints too, all of his other front flippers. I had the custom dog leg at one point and I absolutely loved it. Um, the X series is his manufactured stuff by Riot, and comparing it to the custom dog leg that I had, honestly, it was very hard to tell the difference between the two, which is, I think, awesome for Riot, um, and I'm sure Enrique Pena is super happy about that. The other knife that I have from Pena is the Caballero. This little guy here, this really cool, sleek, fifth pocket knife. When I saw this on his Instagram, I was super stoked. I didn't expect it to be this small, but I still dig it. I think it's a very classy fifth pocket knife. And if you're looking for something that you can dress up a little bit more, maybe take this to a wedding or some other formal event, I think the Caballero is a great choice. It's a really fun front flipper. It's super smooth as it is. It's not going to drop shut, but the action and everything on it is perfect. Again, manufactured by Riot and they just knocked it out of the park with this little design. This is one of the knives that I would definitely consider getting as a custom. Um, this or maybe even a Mula. I would love to check out a Mula at some point, but Enrique Pena, super stoked to have these two knives. One of my favorite makers of all times. Let's get to the next one. So these two are very special because these are two knives designed by my buddy Chris, Renegade EDC. The first one is the massive pocket sword who had is the Gunnir. The Gunnir was Chris's first design. It is just an absolute massive knife that is meant to be worked hard. That is one of the things that I appreciate about Chris. Every design is true to him. He doesn't design anything that doesn't fit what his outlook is on what a knife should do. And the Gunnir does not fail. I've done some incredibly hard tasks with these knives, considering that I'm not much of a hard user on any of my knives. Um, but what I enjoyed is that it performed beautifully. It is super slim, so it fits in the pocket so well for a knife of this size. And the overall look is just very aesthetically pleasing. Now, the second knife that he released, which in my opinion is just that much better too, like it's hard to, to compare both of them, um, was the Gom, the God of Mischief. And the God of Mischief is cool because it is a front flipper deployment. And then you also have the opening here which has this really cool kind of scalloped milling in there so it kind of digs into your finger to deploy a kick-ass worn cliff blade and it is just again super smooth manufactured by riot as well um, but both of these knives are just such an awesome pairing and he's got some really cool stuff in the works too with a different model of the gun here which i'm really excited to check out over at blade show but the gun the gum the gun near two awesome offerings from my buddy chris over at renegade edc appreciate you man it's been an honor knowing you these last couple of years and i'm super stoked to finally meet up in person in blade show this night has been kind of in the back of my mind for a long time since i first heard about it but they were so hard to find i think even now they're still hard to land on a drop and that is the mcnees pm mac 3.5 this one comes by way of my buddy Will again. He tuned this knife so damn perfectly. I mean, it's kind of hard. I'm sure it'll be hard to show it on camera. 
but the detent on this is just like crisp and it just drops shut so smoothly this knife is just cool man i don't know if i'll um if i'll ever find another one like it just because this one was hand tuned by my buddy will but this is just such a kick-ass working knife i carried this in the pocket for a long period of time before anything else just because I really enjoyed it. And you can actually see by the um, thumb stud here, I'll try to get a closer shot where it says hand ground. So it's super cool. Uh, McNeese is doing some awesome stuff. I know they have that little spider code design, but this I think is their most stellar piece. Super stoked to own this one. This one will probably never go anywhere because I fear that I'll never find another smoother mac 3.5 ever again so super stoked to have this one too then we have the benchmade mini crooked river this has been the only benchmade that has stuck around in my collection i owned a bug out a long time ago and passed it on um didn't really enjoy how light it was but this mini crooked river is very special because this was the first knife that lexi ever gifted me she gifted me this for christmas two years ago um, and I ended up really enjoying it. Again, you have that kind of bowie shaped blade. The access locks makes it super fun and fidgety. And I've used this knife to move a lot of times, cutting through tape, cutting through boxes. It's held a great edge. I've never had to sharpen it. It's never um, gone, gone dull or chipped by any means. So this is a super fun knife. I'm a fan of that little wood um, scale on there, which I don't remember the name of the wood, but if I do, I'll put it up there. But it's just a really fun knife. Really enjoy this one. I don't know if I'd ever get the full size because I think this size is just perfect. But if I, I think if I had to add another Benchmade to the collection, it'd probably be an Anthem. I think that's one of like their highest um, light designs. So for now, I'll keep this mini Crooked River and I'm super happy with it. It was a beautiful, thoughtful gift by my girlfriend, Lexi. And it's just a really fun knife to use, so this one will definitely stick around. And speaking of knives that my girlfriend Lexi enjoys, this one she's in love with. She's told me to never ever sell this knife under any circumstances whatsoever. Um, the Desert Warrior by Boker. It's it's a fun little out the side knife. It has a, a kick to it too, which is really funny. Um, but this blade has seen some work too. I mean, this is also been through us with a cup for a couple of moves you can see that some of the blue is fading out on the on the blade there if it decides to focus at all um but yeah this knife is just super fun it's funny that it's become such a like uh, a cult classic in a way i mean in the b in the bst groups um you see these go for a hefty price point way more than they actually should uh, just because they sell out every time they show up at blade hq so if you want something fun, but that also has a nice little kick to it, um, definitely recommend picking up one of these for you or your girlfriend or your daughter or anyone. Um, I think they're super fun little knives, so this will not go anywhere. The donut knife is staying in the collection. Keeping in the theme of fun knives, we have the Baby Banter. This is, I think, my second Baby Banter. I've also had the normal size Banters by Ben Banters over at Nat. That was a whole lot of banter. Um, but this knife is super fun. The reason I really enjoy this knife is not only is it fun and fidgety, but the size is just perfect to keep in my camera bag and kind of have it as a little backup knife in case I need to cut anything little, like a piece of thread or maybe even open a package on the fly. Um, but I'm really stoked to see all the hard work that Ben is putting out there in the EDC community. Um, he's made a really cool looking knife that is just plain, simple, and easy to use for anyone, whether you're into knives or not into knives at all. So it's been cool seeing him experiment with different, um, materials for the handles as well. He also released the Lander, which is a really cool knife. I'm excited to see him at Blade Show and kind of play around with one of those Landers, um, and the Big Banter too. So the Baby Banter, definitely a fun little knife stoked to have it and i'm super stoked to see what ben comes up with in the future this is the microtech ultra tech bayonet um this knife was a really strange purchase for me just because i wasn't really looking for one <laughs> i don't know when i saw it I, I think i might have seen it on an nc blade um email or maybe i was just combing through the website but what really caught my attention was just the bayonet blade i thought it looked really cool the double edge on it i like that they did the black coating and then left this part without a coating 
it's just a, it's just a super sleek knife. I call it my John Wick knife. Um, he uses a Microtep in the movies, but this to me just was a really sleek OTF, and I haven't owned one since I had the Bounty Hunter. Um, and I figured this would just kind of hold me over till I found a bounty hunter that I could buy at table and not have to pay like $600 for it. Um, but really fun. I've taken this with me to work as well. So it's cut through uh, a couple different things and it does it really well and it's super fun. So the Microtech Ultratech Bayonet, super fun knife. Looking forward to maybe adding the bounty hunter somewhere down the line but this one I've had a blast with. So now this knife is a grail to a lot of people. Ended up having to sell, I think like four or five different knives just to buy this one knife. And that is the Koenig Arius. Now this is the second one that I've owned. I did sell my first one, which was a, I think a PJ. And the Arius is just super smooth, super smooth, super ergonomic. This one was also hand tuned by my buddy, Will. And I mean, check this out, like there's no, the blade just comes down so fast and so easily. Um, the Arius is still insanely popular. You can only find them on the secondary because they normally sell out in seconds on drops. So definitely keep an eye out on the secondary market to get a good price on one of these or be signed up to any sort of dealer that will be dropping these. But I highly recommend it. I had a mini goblin from Koenig as well that I thoroughly enjoyed, but the proportions just weren't there for me. On the Arius, um, on the other hand, I definitely enjoy this knife a lot more. So the Arius will be staying in the collection. Even if I sell it, there will forever be room in my collection for another Arius. My only fixed blade in my collection, and that is the Winkler SD-1. This one has the maple handle, and to me, this is just the perfect EDC knife. Perfect size, really great ergonomics, the little bit of jimping there gives you a little bit more leverage when having to really cut into stuff. This knife has also seen a couple of moves with me, and it just performs perfectly. I think Winkler is a really cool brand. My buddy Will introduced me to the company, to the brand itself. Um, and there's a ton of rich history there. I actually did a full length YouTube video on this one so you guys can check it out for a little more info. The sheath that I have it in is an Oak City leather sheath and you guys do incredible work as well. You got a pocket clip on there so you can literally just put it right into your pocket and bring the knife out. So Winkler SD1, my one and only fixed blade. If you guys think there's any other fixed blades that you check out, definitely leave a comment down below. I'm willing to experiment and see what what's out there but it's really tough to beat this winkler design that is it that is my whole knife collection i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like comment and subscribe down below let me know when i should do another knife collection update and also let me know what your favorite knife was what is your favorite knife in your collection right now i kind of want to know i'm curious i love watching knife collection videos on youtube I think it's cool seeing what people collect. I feel like it kind of gives you a little bit of insight into their mind. So it was super fun filming this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.